Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Larry. Welcome to Manipod, a podcast dedicated to men over 50. Brought to you by Manipause.com. Welcome to another Manipod. I'm Larry. This is Mike. Our guest today is Mark Sirota, who has a ton of great stories to tell us. He's worked for Sports Illustrated, the NFL, the PGA. He's going to be working for the XFL. There's, there's so much that he can tell us, not only about stories in photography, but how he got into it. And that's the first question. How did you get into photography? Um, you know, as a teenager, I was always I was into rock and roll music. You know, I, I we go to concerts, and uh, you know, I think my first concert might have been a Kiss concert, a Peter Frampton concert, something like that. And um, uh, my aunt had given me a Vivitar 110 Instamatic camera. You know, you just wind yeah. it by sliding oh, yeah, it this right, way, yeah. <laughs> and um, I you know put it in the the, the back of my pants back here because I knew I'd get searched. Put it in the lower small of my back and snuck it into the old Hollywood Sportatorium in, in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And, um, and my older cousin throws me up on his shoulders, and uh, um, I don't remember whether it was Rush or, or Styx or one of these shows, but um, I started popping some pictures off at this thing. And I actually got a couple of really, really nice photos. In fact, it was Ario Speedwagon because I got him in a magazine called Circus. Nice. So I got published when I was about 13. Wow. And that's what really gave me the, the drive to say, you know what? I want to shoot for Rolling Stone. That was my goal, you know. So um, when I, uh, you know, a few years later in life, I was working as a as a customer service rep for the American Express Company, one of three thousand people in a building in in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I walked outside the front of the building, and they had a newspaper pull box, and there's a picture above the fold, five columns wide. And the first thing I noticed was that there was a photographer's name underneath it, and that's when I decided that's going to be me. How old wow. were you at that time? I was probably 16, 17. Oh, I was wow. a junior bill adjuster, file clerk, whatever, on a, on a part-time job over the summer. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that next year, I had the same job. And halfway through it, I just got so um, depressed with what I was doing. It wasn't cut out for me that I quit, started delivering pizzas for Domino's, and started going to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. Nice. Uh, I was going to a local community college for business administration at the time. American Express was paying for that, but I went to school at night to try to see if I could get into that, that world. And um, uh, it was uh, two weeks into uh, my first quarter of my first year of art school that I met a photographer who was interning at the Miami Herald. The Miami Herald was famous back in that, in that day. They had Pulitzer Prize winning writers all over the place. And people like Dave Barry and Edwin Buchanan and Edwin Pope and, and the photographers were just as good. So um, uh, I decided I wanted to go into, the, into uh, journalism that way. And I went down and I met the uh, director of photography who uh, now has retired from being the AME, the acting managing editor of the Washington Post. So he went on to really big things. And, um, and I... Um, you know, I, I, I went into his office and said, I want to work for you. And he said, well, where's your portfolio? I said, I don't have a portfolio. He said, he said well, what? I just started art school. And he laughed just like that. Yeah. And he laughed. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, there's a wrestling match across the street at the James L. Knight Center. Hulk Hogan is wrestling Randy Macho Man Savage. You need to go over there. You need to get yourself in. You need to get a picture and get it back to my desk by 9 o'clock tonight. And if you can do that, you prove to me that you... Um, that uh, you deserve an opportunity. So on my way out, I grabbed an old Motorola radio that was about as big as a, as a brick, and I had my visitor's badge on um, that just said Miami Herald and had a number on it, and I walked across the street to James All Night Center and backstage to the, to the door where the security was and said, um, I, need to, I need to get in there, I'm running late. The security guard says, well, you don't have a pass. I said, well, I'm with the Miami Herald and I don't have time to go around front and get it. He said, well, I can't let you in. So I said, uh, okay, what's your name? And I said, it's Miami Herald, Mark to, to base, or whatever I did on the radio. <laughs> and I said, what's your name? And he looked at me and he said, just go on in. So I go in, I walk up to the, right up to ringside. I've got this wide angle lens and uh, I don't even know, you know what I'm, what I'm going to do. But there's uh, Hulk Hogan ripping his shirt off. And a few seconds later, Macho Man flying off the top of the ring ropes. And, wow. and I'm shooting and I look up and it's, it's like 20 to 9. And that's when I realized, okay, I got to get out of here. So I get back to the Miami Herald, and long story short, their, their dark room's a spaceship compared to what we had in art school. So by the time I figured out what I was doing, I bring a, a printout 
Macho Man flying through the air. I bring it out, put it on Joe Elbert's desk. He's wor- he's dealing with front page this, front page that. So he's actually sees me but ignores me. <laughs> um, and it's like five minutes till. Well, by the time he gets over to me, it's five after. Mm. So he looks at it and goes, it's a nice picture. Goes, what time is it? Five after nine. You blew your deadline. Thanks for coming in. Come back in your, in your last year of school, and we'll talk about an internship. Oh. So now I go home, and I've got tears in my wow. eyes. I blew my opportunity. And all I really had was a pager and, you know, a one-sheet kind of uh, bio on myself. And I wake up the next morning, go into my file clerk job uh, at American Express, um, and um, my pager goes off. And so I go out. I hit a pay phone. I call Call this number. He says, this is Joe Elbert from last night, from yesterday. I'm like, I got in trouble for taking the radio. I got in trouble for sneaking in. And he said, have you seen the paper yet today? And I said, no. No way. So we'll go down and get the paper. And, and I think I told you earlier on that he said, you're going to do this wrestling match. We've never published a, a, a wrestling picture in the Miami Herald, and we never will. But go and try to prove me wrong. That's how it was laid out. I said, no. He goes, well, when you get it, call me back. I go down, pick up the paper, open it up, and it's on the front of the sports page. And, and again, how old are you? Um, at that time, I was probably 18 or 19. Wow. wow. That's right? crazy. And, wow. Um, and I called him back up, and I said, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll come back. And he goes, no, no, you start your internship Monday. And I interned for two straight years, not for winter, summer, fall internship. I interned and worked... Uh, for 50 bucks an assignment or traded film and paper or whatever I could for two years at the Miami So one of the things that we emphasize for menopause is the idea that you need to follow your passion. Mm-hmm. And if you, set, if you put the right energy out there and you are truly passionate about what you want to do, things tend to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know that somebody else with that same opportunity that didn't have the, the drive that you had would have made that opportunity happen. Absolutely not. And yeah. I wouldn't advocate trying that today. Sneaking right. into right. Uh, you know, a, a, an event at, at, a, at, a, at a convention center in Miami is not what I would recommend. Yeah, much harder that. now probably But too. finding your own yeah. way. Yeah. Fast forward to today. If you were starting today, that 17, 18-year-old self, how hard would it be to get in? Um, it wouldn't be because internships are the way to go. It's the same. That part of it... You know, it, you got, in, in, in my line of work, at least as starting as a journalist, moving into a portrait photography mode and, and photographing celebrities commercially and stuff like that, being comfortable in my own skin so I could stand there with LeBron James or Michael Jordan or, or Muhammad Ali, wow. uh, uh, took a long period of time. But that, that inner, uh, you know, strength of saying, you know, I deserve it. If not me, who? Right. You know? Right. 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 Um, uh, why not me? Right. And and by the way, when I started art school, and my mother uh, would never admit this to this day, she still says, you know, oh, I knew, I knew, because when I started <laughs> art school, I wanted to shoot for Rolling Stone. I yeah. wanted a cover of Rolling Stone, Sports Illustrated, and I've knocked all those down over my career. Yeah. Um, and she used to say to me, no, weddings and bar mitzvahs, <laughs> and that's the way to make money and all that. Yeah. And now she says, oh, my son, he's done yeah. all these books. And my, my son, I my was son. Right there. And she encouraged me in the way of letting me live at home until I was 30, right. you know, letting me do the things that it took um, to become successful. But to go past all that, even, you know, in my own household being told, well, if you want this as your dream, this is what you have to do. No. Why? I right. want, right. why can't I shoot for Rolling Stone and Sports right. Illustrated? You, you have a, a funny story about Dan Marino. Yeah. I love this because you guys had long hair, right? I, I, mean, know, I, I know you, really you had really hair. long hair yeah. and you... Yeah. Oh, my God. Really? It's down to my toes. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Was, well, I have a little long hair now, but it was much longer before. Yeah. But the, your story is great. My Tell hair was so it. long. If I walked out of the gym with tight shorts on and a T-shirt, someone was driving by in a 1989 Camaro and whistling from behind. Oh. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm a man. I'm <laughs> yeah. a guy. Yeah. But, yeah, I had very long hair. But you hair. are quite handsome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your body's quite nice. So. <laughs> I appreciate uh. that. <laughs> that's uh, what he was saying, basically, yeah. in that Camaro. No, um... You know, I, I, I've had the, the fortunate opportunity to work with Dan Marino on several book uh, projects. We did uh, a book the year he broke all the biggest records in football. Um, you know, I, I actually got that gig, which is an interesting story. Uh, Marino was playing against Joe Montana. Montana's playing for the Kansas City Chiefs at this time. And they're in a playoff game in Miami, and Marino runs in a five-yard touchdown. Like, 
you realize how funny that sounds. Marino scrambling <laughs> right, and right. is the only touchdown he ever scored without throwing the ball. And I've got this picture of him leaping into the end zone like a Heisman pose. And so I sent it to his foundation um, in, in hopes that uh, you know, he would want to have it because it was a rare scramble for touchdown. I got a call a few days later, um, and this elderly gentleman that I hear on the phone says, this is Dan Marino. And I'm like, it's one of my friends. Who's, right. who's fucking with Bull me now? Yeah. 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 Elderly. And I hung up on him. <laughs> elderly. Oh. And then two minutes later, no. my phone rang again. He said, this is Dan Marino Sr. And I was like, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> and he said, I want to meet you. You sent this to our foundation. I handle all of Danny's foundation stuff at that time, mid-80s, early 90s. You didn't need a whole team of people to do that. Uh, and so uh, I go down and meet him, and he says, well, Dan's going to have 20 members of his family at his house um, this weekend, and we'd like you to do a portrait. Uh, and so when I was out there, uh, you know, here's how opportunity comes. You get aggressive. And, and so when I went out there, I spent time with him and his family, and I made this, um, uh, th this really cool image. And he has a book on his coffee table on, on Joe, Joe Namath. And it's kind of a photo-driven book. It's got, it's all, you know, pictures to it, but it's a demonstration of how to throw and, and, and play the mm -hmm. position. And so uh, I looked at the book and I said, I want to do something like that on you. And he said, well, put it together. And within a year, we were working on our first book with HarperCollins. So we became friends. We became admirers of each other's work. We're still very close friends to this day. And then when we finished that initial book, we did a book tour. So we went to uh, did book signings together, and we had a book launch party, big party at his restaurant in Miami. And there I am in a, in a suit, um, and uh, looking quite you know, handsome. With, with I'm long sure. hair down to here and a goatee, and like my wife would have never married me at that point, <laughs> never, ever. And she was still in middle school at the time, but she never would have married me anyway. And um, so I. Uh, you know, I'm standing there and I'm like all proud and with Danny and he's four feet taller than me and he's looking down on me and he's, he's making fun of me a little bit about, you know, well, even Stevie Wonder, I hear they got autofocus on these cameras. <laughs> even Stevie Wonder could take pictures, you know, and he's chuckling with me. And then all of a sudden he just looked on camera and he said, I've always wanted to do this. And he pulls a scissor out, pair of scissors out of his jacket, leans around and snips off my ponytail oh my no, and hands way. it to me. And I should find that footage somewhere because oh we had God. copies of all our, our clips and stuff. And here I am holding my, my hair in my hands. And then uh, I know that. So, I know how that so, feels. so yeah, he felt, but, but it's also, you asked me off camera if I got right. angry. Right. For a split second, I was maybe stunned, a little disappointed. But you know what? It's like, you know, it's like one of my friends. And nowadays, working with athletes is few and far between that you can deal with people that way. Mm -hmm. Now, did you grow up back after that? Or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, did he cut it again? No, he didn't. But the next time, you know, a couple of seasons later when he realized, you know, that he, still, he would always just bust my chops. He'd be like, yeah, it's, you know that long hair is out of style, man. <laughs> and, I, and I'd say, dude, I'm going to wear it until it comes back in style. And, <laughs> and so we would always have that constant thing. And he would always, or he'd just grab me by the hair, you know, like coming off the field after a bad loss or even, a, you know, you know a, a big game, like, he would, we would always have that interaction. Yeah. And I've had that with, with other athletes, you know, with the Tiger Woods of the world. So again, this is, this is a, another situation where what were you doing before you, when you sent that photo to Dan Marino? What was I doing? Um, I, in other words, were I you... I was interning. You were I, interning. I was an intern. So again, yeah. you took a bold move, mm -hmm. a shot in the dark, because mm -hmm. you believed in yourself. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. That, that's, that's really that that's is amazing. That is a very cool, yeah. cool story. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, tell us your website. It's MarkSerota.com, M-A-R-C-S-E-R-O-T-A. Can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. Everybody go on and, and take a look at the great photographs. It's amazing. And we need you to come back because you have so many more stories. Happy to Will do you come it. back? Great. Yep, thanks. Nice to see you. Absolutely. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to hear more podcasts or read great articles, get involved with the menopause community for men over 50 on menopause.com. And don't forget, live life, live young.